an eviction, and um, the bank was granted like 15 days possession, but I do have the option of appealing, which I do intend to do. Now, you had mentioned something about claiming the role of executive in a time frame. Would that, um, doing that pertain to um, to me? To, to do a counterclaim against the bank? Well, um, you said something about claiming the role of executor between a time frame. Yeah, what I was saying is, is, is in the original, in the original process of a of a court case. So when a when the, when a court case is first brought against you, they'll issue okay. a writ, a summons, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then there'll be usually a couple of weeks or sometimes a month between the summons and the first hearing. Yes. Right. When they issue the writ, your name is on it. Yes? Exactly. But they have not yet appointed the executor. They can't, Iris. You have to appoint the executor. and You don't realise it, but when you plea before a judge, you're actually ordering the judge to become the executor of the matter. Okay. So so that process um, doesn't pertain to if you're doing an appeal? If you're doing an appeal the whole thing doesn't really apply because it okay. means you've already started the process. Okay. Okay. Well, is there anything that I would be able to do other than doing an appeal to save my home? I would... Yes, there is. There is the claim of your land as sacred, which okay. is one of the remedies. There's two remedies in the process that we put there. One is to go down the process of, of the loyal tenant, and then the other is the process of claiming your land as a sacred, um, as a sacred closed land. Um, it really is up to you, Iris. I mean, the problem of of trying to get remedy in this system is, as we've said, they're just crooks. Yes. Exactly. So they're not following their own rules, are they? No, they're not. So I probably, whilst you have the option of appeal, I don't think the appeal process is going to stop them. It'll, it just buys you time, potentially. That's all. Yes? Right. But but being that I went through the process of, um, of of claiming the tenancy, and that didn't work, so now I can use the other process. Oh, absolutely, okay. yes. Okay. The only reason that the tenancy process is there is to give people time. You see, most and, and strictly speaking, it is under their system what they should be doing. But like I just said, they're crooks. I, I didn't think I would ever say this, but they're absolute crooks. I mean, my grandfather on my my great grandfather on my father's side was was an attorney general for Australia. I mean, I think all these people would be spinning in their graves looking at the way that these judges operate today. They're just petty thieves. So, Iris, the only reason I put it there is, strictly speaking, they should honour the law. They don't. So look at the second method. Yes. Okay. okay. All right. Thank all right. you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, we're going to take another call. Um, if I can find him. Okay. There we go. As, uh, it's Ron on again. Uh, Ron, you're on the air. Uh, Frank, today I received an email from uh, a friend of mine, and it was uh, about four emails back and forth between two Canadians, and they had used the executor process in court. Now, this is what they reported, that they forced four Crown attorneys to run out of the building, and the judge locked himself up in the courtroom or in the in the chambers. <clears throat> I'm trying to run this, this story down, but... So far, I haven't had enough time. Uh, I'll send you the correspondence that I've received so far. No, if you want to read it. it, it's doing the rounds. That story is doing the rounds. Oh, good. Remember, remember, I said to you that that there was a promotion in the truth movement and the patriot movement that people running out of court was a win, you know, and people thought that was funny, and and really we were able to explain that that was merely just the judge changing the. Standing of the court, right? People forget. People forget, even though we've said it. The fact that that a judge ran out and didn't dismiss the case is not a win. It is not a win. Unless the record is expunged with extreme prejudice, it is not a win. Well, that's true. 
Um, so yeah. another part of the story was, I don't know how this this group got involved, but it was the they called the provost marshal in it into court, and they had some uh, army people in there, and basically told the judge to release this guy. Uh, the, I know it's pretty wild. Brian, have you heard about this story yet? Uh, no, I've uh, I've been really busy. Okay. So, uh, yeah. there, there's, well, I will say this, Ron. There's an old standing story, and what it sounds like is that that an old standing story has been resurrected from the past. Oh. There is there is a story of a uh, Native American of a particular tribe that, under a Queen Anne treaty, was arrested <clears throat> and was represented with the marshals in the top end there when the tribal lands actually nations went over into the states yeah Mm -hmm. and when they were when he was arrested he was uh, presented before the court and there were two u.s marshals there and the judge was treating with disrespect and uh, the judge kept watching the marshals as the marshals became more and more aggressive towards the judge and the case was dismissed and, and then the judge apologized but it was it was a, a case that was probably at least six eight years ago, and it sounds like that's been resurrected. But look, I, my my frustration with with the whole kind of executive thing or any of these things is that it's almost like this, you know, twenty happy customers serve type mindset. I don't care. I don't care what things are if they are lawful respectful have some logic to it can be explained and can help then let's consider it but there's so much rubbish around the executive thing that it just it just pains me that they've made it so grandiose and maybe they would say the same thing about the ecclesiastical deed i've explained why the executor works the and i've said it now the executor is a recognition that there is a small window between the writ the form of action and the cause of action, where if there are 14 days that have transpired, you can step into that gap and claim the office of executor having been abandoned and then take control. But that requires someone to be quite competent. And now I'm saying you can do it in a a, uh, documentary process using the reverse of the writ. But um, I just keep hearing all these funny stories which just don't add up, and that's one of them, Ron. Sorry. Hey, it's not my story. <laughs> no, 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 it's not you, but yeah, okay? I just don't know why these people create all these stories, you know? Well, <clears throat> it's kept it's kept the truth movement divided for a long time, Ron. I guess. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Okay. Good night. Um, I've got a couple of questions in here, uh, Brian. One is uh, from uh, Paris B. If I start the process, can they deport me? The, the, the issue of the claim of right, okay, your birth certificate, uh, I presume, was from Argentina. I think you asked the question, yeah. So your birth bond's from Argentina. Well, I would be, I would be seeing the process to Argentina um, and directing it there. I w- I, one of the big yellow warning things we say on there is if you've become a citizen of a country, I don't recommend anyone shake the tree on, on taking your citizenship out for a spin because, yes, they could get aggressive, but I would, use the, I would definitely use the birth certificate process in terms of claiming that you're living and send it back to Argentina. Absolutely. Um, I hope that answers the question. Um, there's Thanks, Frank. Yeah, uh, we yeah. Let, let's take a call from uh, Shambo. Uh, Shambo, you're on the air. Hi, Frank. Hi. Hey, uh, I asked you a question last time about the birth certificate and stuff, and you answered it well. I I had another thought. Would not the birth certificate also, or could be a transfer of property? Well, but yeah, the birth certificate is, is is actually multiple things. Right, so, I remember. You know, 
Yeah, it's the birth's it's, death. I just I, after I talked to you before, I thought I wonder if it's you know a transfer of property, a conveyance from your parents to the state or whoever. Well, it's 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 actually certificate of title of that event. So that process took place in an event, and the event is recorded in Roman time, and Roman time is private property. So they they claim that conveyance as private property by recording the event, right? Right, and just like you said, certificate of title. That crossed my mind also. If it's just a certificate, then they would hold the title. Yeah, all that title means is that it's recorded in their register. That's what title means. Right. So uh, my other question: You were talking about trust earlier. Uh, can we in court, if they send this? Uh, document to us, summons or whatever, and it lists basically a beneficiary's name on there. Yep. Uh, what, asking them to enforce the terms of the trust. I don't know where we'd find the terms of the trust, but it was just a question I had. And another question was, uh, are we unclaimed or abandoned property? Well, we are, we are considered Flotsam and Jetsam as part of their system of control, absolutely. But they run that under their own system of, um, of effectively managing probate because we declare we're dead. But what I would, what I would just answer your first question: um, the role of the executor, and we will work through these notes over the next week. The role of executor gives you the ability to administer the trust and the trust in this case is the court matter so effectively you become the the judge directing the court as to what takes place with the court matter yeah uh yes and isn't it well to my understanding i'm not really up on trust but isn't the beneficiary the one that uh actually can force the trust to be uh executed properly no no it's the executor or the administrator that the executor appoints okay but the beneficiary i'm probably off on this but i thought if there was something incorrect that he could uh bring it to the attention and it'd be yeah what you're yeah. raising is beneficiaries have the right to question the administrator the trustee in in the performance of their duties but in 99 percent of the time they simply um, pretend that they can't hear you ignore you all of that so people have tried that angle doesn't work doesn't work but this is a straight out procedural um, weakness in their system which they can't circumvent without destroying the base of the sacrament of penance being the indulgence so that's what i was trying to explain they can't they can't write a bond a bond is merely the public version of the indulgence and indul every financial instrument is an indulgence so they can't perfect the instrument the bonds with huge amounts of money without the indulgence being perfected and they can't therefore circumvent the writ to the hearing and this gap in trust law that doesn't have an executor appointed until you appoint the executor by perfecting the jurisdiction of the court. Does that make sense or am I not no, making sense? No, it does, Frank, and I just wanted to make one point. Uh, I, I've been through quite a bit of this. Uh, could it also be when we return an infraction ticket because they make us request the hearing and sign on the back? Because I didn't sign one one time, and they brought it right to my attention. Yeah, the, the, that's slightly different. I mean, I know that people think that that's a, a, a you know a contracting process, but it, that doesn't actually count. I mean, sometimes things are red herrings, and that actually is one of them. There is a formal ritual required to perfect the sacrament of penance, and that is for you to profess your sin or to demonstrate incompetence, delinquency, which they can then use their legal fiction to complete the process as if you had confessed your sin, yeah? In fact, that what they say is your 
your um, delinquent